What do you mean I can't go inside that cave? I'm a dive instructor. Those rules don't apply to me. You tell him, Brian. Uh... Hello everyone, my name is Gus. Hi, I'm Woody. And today we'll be talking about a topic that is pretty interesting, it's debatable. I don't know if two cave divers have like the same opinion on this one. <laughs> I mean, I think it's very much open for debate, although we do have kind of some, you know, guidelines from the industry, let's just say. But uh, let's just get to it and see see what it is. Let's do it. What do you mean I can't go inside that cave? I'm a dive instructor. Those rules don't apply to me. You tell him, Brian. Uh, <laughs> that is, by the way, very common uh, to see. And we will be reacting to Brian Stafford's video. He is uh, an instructor trainer for SSI, like you, Woody. And um, he has a channel called Lake Hickory Scuba. Great channel. He has, like, thousands of videos, I feel like, uh, out there. He, he knows his stuff. Uh, recreational uh, instructor. And um, he's going to be talking about the difference between caves and caverns and all of that. Because we do get that question all the time. How do you know if you're inside a cavern versus a cave? So let's give it a shot. What's up, guys? This is Brian again from Lake Hickory Scuba and Marina. If you are new to us, I just want to say welcome to our channel. I really hope that you find our videos interesting and entertaining and, more importantly, educational. If you are new, though, make sure you hit the little subscribe button over here and click the little bell icon. That way, you will be notified each and every time that we upload a new video. If you are a longtime subscriber of us, I just want to say thank you for coming back and joining us, and I really hope you enjoy this video. Today's topic, we're going to kind of get into a heated area such as cave diving. Now I know there's a lot of dive sites out there that have overhead environments. Some people call them caverns, some people call them caves. What we're going to do today is we're going to take a look at the actual definitions of say open water diving, cavern diving, and cave diving. And I'm going to show you some actual examples of dives that I've been on say in the last few years. And I'm going to show you where the line was crossed. Where we went from say open water into a cavern environment and where we actually crossed the line say cavern into a cave environment. So without further ado, let's jump to the footage and I'll give you some great commentary throughout this video. Is he a cave diver? Yeah. Alright guys, so this... He's not a certified cave diver as okay. of the recording of this video in December of 2021. Uh, he is a site mountain diver, and um, I believe he's an instructor in cavern and ice diving. So he has some experience in overhead environment, but he's not a certified cave diver. Okay. Yeah. Some of this seems like I know there's certain rules written out there by various different opinions. I don't know who the governing body is. I really don't. We're cave divers, and... We certainly, my overall belief before he gets into this, my overall belief without having immediately studied this again is that you've got to have sight of the exit. You've got to have light. Once you don't have light anymore, you're in a cave. Forget about nighttime. That's when light is available. Let's see what he says, but that's my general, very general opinion and understanding of what is the difference between a cavern and a cave. All right. First dive site that we're going to look at is one of my favorites. This is called Devil's Den. It's down in Williston, Florida. You were there and a couple days ago. I chose this site because it's so versatile. You can do open water diving. You can do cavern diving. There are some designated caves here, mm -hmm. um, though they really don't recommend you going in them for the obvious reasons, and they really don't even want cave divers using these two particular caves. They're locked. But I am going to show you several different parts of this dive that's considered open water and a swim through. We're going to talk about a cavern, and we're going to talk about when the cavern actually switches over to a cave by definition alone. But I want to give you a quick definition of what open water diving is and talk about what a swim through is before we get into the other two. Open water sites are basically just a body of water where you have a direct ascent to the surface um, without any type of overhead environment. So that could be a spring, a quarry, a lake, the ocean, you know, a nice beautiful coral reef, say 30 foot deep, you can always swim straight up to the surface. What a swim through is, it is an overhead environment, but there's a clear destination as far as the entry and exit point. So take my phone. Maybe this is the overhead environment, this is the entry, this is the exit, and as long as I can see both at the same time, and let's say it's a distance shorter than somewhere between 10 to 20 feet, that would be considered a swim through. So no matter where I'm at in this overhead environment, I can clearly see the entry point and the exit point. So as you can tell here in this part of the dive, I'm just going to say that depending on the agency, that distance that he talked about change, I believe SSI is 30 feet. Correct. 
And typically they want two divers to be able to swim in and two divers to be able to swim out. Meaning the, the space, entrance, not the, the space, yeah. the, the restriction, yeah. Yeah, but it is interesting that he hasn't touched on it yet. I have seen certain wrecks, for example, that are swim-throughs unless they're silted out, and that swim-through no longer, you, there's no way you would see the exit from mm. 30 feet away. It can change based right. upon the silting that can occur inside. So you got to be careful if you're in a swim-through and not turn it into a cave. <laughs> we're in open water yeah it's a little dark just because we are underground but i have a clear uh direct ascent to the surface at any given time there's no overhead that's going to block me from doing that now here briefly we're going to transition into a cavern so what's the definition of a cavern a cavern is an overhead environment where you still have a direct ascent, but it's more of a diagonal. it's not just straight up you're still going to have some of that ambient light coming from the surface but you don't have um, a clear exit point, if you will. So it, in a cavern would be, I've got an, an entry that also designates as an exit point as well. And as I go in, there's no exit over here. As I go in, I'm in an overhead environment, but I, I have to return the same way I came from, and I'm still going to have some ambient light. So as you can see here, I'm clearly in a cavern. I've got ambient light coming over my shoulder. If I was to turn off my camera lights or my flashlight, then I would still be able to see uh, what I was doing and where I was at because of that ambient light, and I can use that ambient light as my exit point. Now here briefly, we're going to uh, switch over to an actual cave, and this is actually the exact same spot. So I'm going to show you where this particular cavern actually turns into a cave. And this is it here. As you can clearly see, there is zero ambient light in front of me. There is zero ambient light behind me. I have, at this point, effectively transitioned into a cave environment. Now, I was just there with open water students. Literally, I was just there. I just certified some open water students there. Yeah. There are places that I would not take them in Devil's Den. It gets tucked up underneath those rocks. You can get kind of out of the light zone and you no longer would have light if you covered up your lights in fact it's right near the gate they have a blocked gate which clearly goes deeper penetrating into the cave so maybe i'm going to call that the beginning of the cave zone right. but if you just moved forward a little bit i mean when i say a little bit like from me to you like eight to ten feet you're yeah. you're going to be back out of those rocks and see light again so he, by the way, he seems like a really nice guy. Can't you see by the way he's talking and his attitude? And he's yeah. not so like, I'm adamant. If you do this, you're in a cave and you, you shouldn't not. be there. And he's not lecturing. He's just saying, we got to establish some boundaries, right? If there's yeah. no boundaries, Gus, then how do we ever determine no, I, what a cave I, or a I get it. Is? I, I feel like it, there is an effort to... You know, tell people that this is okay, this is not okay, and we will talk about that a little bit. Um, you know, later in this video, uh, efforts that are made by some of the agencies out there to to specify this. I just have a really tough time with it, um, just from a logical point of view. As you know, I'm I'm a very logical person, like fact based person, and to me, it's like I, I would never, I cannot imagine ever calling Devil's Den a cave, just because you turn around a rock and all of a sudden you don't see like, oh, now I'm in a cave. Um, just back out two feet and then you're back in the cave. Like, I, I don't know. It's just tough. And I get it. I get it. We need to put a definition in it and all of that. But I feel like if you don't even have a sign in there that says this is where the cave begins, I have a hard time calling it a cave. I feel like those signs are a good indication that the cave is about to begin. At least in Florida, which is where Devil's Den is located which is basically in cave country. Yes. In devil's den situation, I hear you. It's sort of yeah. like, okay, we're push, we're stretching the cave rules here. Come on, just move forward a few feet and you're clearly looking at the exit and the surface, but still he's just trying to demonstrate a set of rules that exist so that we have some boundaries. And since you are a factual person, which I know you are, I'm really glad I was able to clarify, clarify some other facts recently. It took you a while to accept what I am, for example. Right, well, that, that's I don't want to deviate, but remember that? We don't, we don't. Like he was struggling to know what I am, and now okay. he knows. 
um, with facts. The, you know, I, I've noticed going back to stretching the truth. I've noticed that also happen a lot with uh, open water spots mm -hmm. where people have like a sinkhole that is like 30 feet deep and, mm -hmm. you know, th th 20 feet apart and be like, that's an open water, right? <laughs> you know, like they'll yeah. certify somebody as an open water diver in like a hole that basically three people fit. Yeah. They stretch that true. Th that too. Well, that can be open water or confined water, and that's just a different conversation. But right. But this one presents significantly more risks, which is why, as he said, it's sort of a heated topic within diving. Because this one, if you get a new open water diver into Devil's Den, wedged back there, and they lose light, for you and I, we're the reason you're struggling with it, Gus, is you're not going to panic right. anywhere in Devil's Den. No. Lights out, you have no lights, and you're back there, and it's pitch black. You're going to be like, I'm just going to move forward, and I'm going to see light. Now try, and I tell instructors <laughs> this all the time, try your best to close your eyes and pretend this is dive five. Yeah. All of a sudden, you're back there in I'm freaking total out. darkness. Some people freak. They don't move forward. They just freak, freak, kick, wedge themselves in a rock and sit there. And they're like a deer in headlights. And they're like, I'm breathing all my air. And they what could do, drown. What do do? Yeah. Even though that's all they had to do. We know. I know. You're thinking, well, just, just move forward. Literally, <laughs> move forward three feet. Where do you come from? And just that, go back there. That's why they're setting these rules up. We're yeah. not thinking about you, a cave diver, right? three feet into the cave zone in Devil's Den. <laughs> that's okay. not what he's talking about. Now, with a cave environment, cave environments, there is no depth rating to them. So it could be five foot deep. It can be 100 foot deep. It can be 200 foot deep. It doesn't really matter on the depth. With caverns, it tends to, to change around the 70 foot mark. So a cavern that is deeper than 70 foot tends to be considered a cave. But a cave, there is zero depth distinction to it. It's basically where you have zero uh, ambient light. You cannot see your entry point or your exit point. This is clearly a cave right here. If I was to turn off my flashlight, it would just be pitch black. You wouldn't be able to know where to go without some type of guideline leading you out. Now this next site that we're going to look at is Blue Grotta. Blue Grotta is basically right across the street from Devil's Den. It's also down in Williston, Florida. It's a beautiful place to take all different types of divers. I really like Virgil. He's a little soft shell turtle here. Now, another cool thing about Blue Grotta is you can see clear distinctions between a cavern and a cave, and we're going to talk about them once again as we descend down. Yeah. Now, here we are actually in the open water portion or the open water environment of Blue Grotta. I have a clear, distinctive uh, ascent that I can come up. There is zero overhead that's going to block me. There are some swim through. Some of these platforms you see here, you can swim all the way up underneath them. You can swim up <laughs> just the main uh, deck area. You can swim up underneath it and pop out. Those would be considered swim throughs. Now we've actually transitioned into a cavern. We have that overhead environment, yet we're still above 70 foot. We also have plenty of ambient light coming down through us so we can see the entry we can see the exit which is the same part um and and like i said we're we haven't reached the point where there's zero ambient light yet so we're still technically in a cavern here uh, and like i said this is a very open environment this particular cavern here is kind of recognized by the industry as okay for open water divers to adventure into at the 35 foot mark you are technically at the beginning of that cavern there's a little um diving bell that you can swim up in pull your reg out and actually talk to uh your dive buddy which is really cool and try to whistle i always tell people try to whistle because they were able to it's harder they were able to it's harder it's harder there pat uh, uh, i just want to i just wanted to add uh the definitions that he's talking about like around the 70 foot market transferring to a cave you know again this is where we have issues mainly because if you think of buford springs for example um buford it's a beautiful cavern and you, I mean, it, you can be 100 feet, 120 probably, and still see the exit and see the light and see clear. There's the water, unless the visibility is bad, which happens sometimes when the river comes in. Um, unless the visibility is bad, which is not normal, the water is crystal clear. You can see from 120 all the way to the hole, like all the way to the exit. Um, and, you know, there are, again, other places like if you think about the ballroom at... 
Eagle's Nest, which that shoot that tunnel goes all the way down to like a hundred and something. You can get all the way to the mount, which is where the sign is, and look up and see all the way to see the hole and the light coming through. Now it looks like a like a Barely. like a ceiling. <laughs> Barely. <laughs> like if if there was a ceiling up there with tiles and one of the tiles was missing, just a little hole up there, a hundred feet above you, and no sill. Everybody was in good trim and buoyancy. Right. You Otherwise, could, you I... could argue by definition that that, that is a cavern. Close. Um, but actually, I found a website, CaveDiving.com. I want to I want to talk to you about this. But before you switch while to while you that, do that, I'll 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 pull it up while you. Okay. Do. What what I was going to say is, did you notice in the video just now, all the granulars of dust floating around in the water column there at blue grotto yeah it is fine silt like super light silt which yep. is a general trait of the florida caves i mean if sometimes i feel like if i even look at that silt the wrong way it's going to come up right imagine again i'm, I'm going to go back to this who are we trying to protect here we're trying to protect people that are Forget about even cavern certified. They're just open water certified. We have a ton of brand new and uncertified divers swimming around in Blue Grotto. I mean, even instructors. So if you have an instructor that has a bunch of students and they are like, look, I want to do a deep class with them, even though they have like 10 dives under their belt. Many agencies are like, that's enough to do a deep specialty class. That's right. They have no experience ever having gone into a no light zone, though. Now, all of a sudden, that instructor's like, hey, industry says it's fine. I have no sign telling me at Blue Grotto I can go to the bottom. And all of your nine students, maybe you have an assistant to help you with your ratios. Do you think they're like this? Or do you think they're all perfectly <laughs> like this? We've they're been all, to we all seahorsing their way. Here we go through the bottom of Blue Grotto, which their fins are silting out. Yep. At that point, I'm telling you, I was just there. You cannot see. Not only can you not see the surface, but there used <laughs> to be your hand. there used to be a <laughs> a rope that would take you all the way through, just you know, right there right. on your left side. So you could follow that rope all the way down to the bottom of the cavern, which is now classified as a cave, back up yeah. through the surface. And we will talk about that. You in could a second. not see that. You will not see even that rope when that amount of non cave divers are at the bottom of it. Now that's a cave, because listen, they aren't. They could easily panic and go the wrong way. And at Blue Grotto, there's wedges under there where you can just wedge in the bottom if they're freaking out. That and, is true. And maybe that person is floundering, freaking. Imagine panic yep. and freak. Mind is yeah, no longer. drown. And they'll drown. Yeah. They'll yeah. spit their reg. They'll drown. For sure. And you can't find your student. This is the other thing I want to point out. You're the instructor who cannot lose sight. You have direct supervision requirements. It means you got to be able to both physically contact and see all of your students. No way are you going to see that guy nine number nine in the back. No chance. <laughs> if the bottom of Blue Grotto is silted out. You I mean, let's speak two. the truth, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. they've changed Blue Grotto to say it's a yeah. cave below. And I was just there. So everybody knows the cave warning sign now, the Grim Reaper sign, is exactly below Peace Rock, which is at 50 feet. You drop down behind Peace Rock, and it's kind of like another rock level mm -hmm. exactly at 65 feet. So I dropped down there, and then I went a little bit below it to turn around. And I was in good trim and buoyancy, mind you, and I could still clearly see the cavern from there. Yeah, I did not go any further because I had a non-cave dive student with me, and I didn't want to violate their new rules. But from there, turn around, boom. There's Peace Rock, the outline of it, and there's plenty of light. You can see light. everything. So I wanted to add that dialogue because I want yeah. to keep Some in mind. Some new changes they made at Blue Grotto. And when Brian recorded this video, like you win the first weekend, those changes were made. I first think that, weekend. Yeah, the sign was perfect. Brand perfect. new. Brand, Brand new. Yeah. And by the way, nobody was going beyond the sign. You know, normally everybody's respect, going down yeah. through there. Nobody anymore was right. going about it. But Gus, I, I did all of that not to talk a lot. Yeah, I did all that to set some perspective of we're protecting instructors that could easily lose their students and we're protecting newer divers. Yeah, that's who we're talking about.
Um, I think, and, and Brian touched on this, and you mentioned as well that you did it, those swim-throughs under the platforms at Blue Grot are great. Uh, but pro tip, because of the silt being so fine, when you do your swim through, not only you can practice your buoyancy and trim, because if you're vertical, you, I, don't, I don't think you can go through that platform if you're vertical. You, you have to be on trim. Yeah. Um, but also, once you make it through, look back, like turn around and look back and see what the silt looks like compared to before you went in. I had my open water yeah. students, brand new open water students. By the way, we we're at 24 feet. Yeah. I said, let's swim around. Go through that. Because I had been practicing trim and buoyancy with them from dive one. I'm like, right. so now tr- practice. Even frog kicking. Brand new open water students. And they were so happy that they got to actually do this. And it changed their diving. Yep. Instead of just going through the skills and on the cards, every agency says practice good buoyancy and trim. But that should be a major part of your class. Yeah. And um, I, I did that with my brother. My brother just got certified like a few months ago. Um, and you know, we went to blue grotto and I made him swim through that, that onto that plot. And from day one, like I did his checkout dives, his open water checkout dives. I'm like, frog kick, we're going to frog kick, start practicing. So I, nice. I feel bad and I wouldn't do this with every student, but he's my brother. He's three years younger, three years younger than me. I can, you know, go a little bit harder. Uh, so I would make him go onto the platform and if he silted out, I'm like unacceptable, like go back and do it again. Yeah. And like, <laughs> nope, that's not unacceptable at that depth. And and I and I made mine learn frog kicking as well. Yes. It's okay to introduce that Absolutely. in a safe place for open water students. I mean, 25 feet under the blue grotto decks. Yeah. No problem. Yeah. Super safe. Um, so anyway, I went to this website, cavediving.com. It's, it's called the world's leading site for uh, cave diver training and how-to information. And they do have a really cool article about how cavern and cave diving differ. Like, how are they different? Because I personally don't like the whole idea behind the light zone thing. And the main reason for that is that, and I know you mentioned, like, we shouldn't even talk about nighttime, what happens at nighttime. But by definition, the whole light thing, to me, just because you lose your light, like whether it's by silting or the time of the day or whatever, that doesn't immediately convert that into a cave, all right, in my opinion. I always believe that it was more about how much do you penetrate in, and this is where, for example, places like Vortex, I feel like go like the complete wrong way when it comes to cave and cavern, all right, and I'll talk about that in a second, but if you look at cavediving.com, they have a recommendation. This is a pretty cool picture that I found on their site. So they're saying, look, if you're on the open water, meaning a clear line to the surface, straight up, you're you're in open water. Once you're in an overhead environment, you're in a cavern. And they say if you go 200 feet or 60 meters away from the air, so the actual surface, then you're no longer in a cavern. You're in a cave. Even if you can see the light, even if you can see whatever, you're too far away from the air that we would consider that to be a cave. Now, these are recommendations and guidelines. These are not like setting stone or whatever, but they're saying that, like you said earlier, initially in this video, you have to keep line of sight to the exit, okay, in order to consider that a cavern. And then past that, and they're saying 30 meters or 100 feet deep, um, you are in a cave regardless. So whether you can see light or not or whatever. So like Buford, uh, would be an example of you being able to go 100 feet under um, under an overhead environment and still be able to see the exit. And they're saying that should be considered a cave technically. I don't know if I necessarily agree with that. I think Buford is a cavern. I think Vortex is a cavern. I think Blue Grotto is a cavern as well. The way I think about it is if those places were dry, right, there were no water and I went exploring in them and somehow I made my way all the way to the bottom of Blue Grotto, I don't think I would say that I was a cave. I think I would be like, that was a cavern. It's a deep cavern, 100 feet deep all the way to the bottom. But would I call it a cave? If it was dry, probably not. I would say that was a cavern. And, That's and, just my and, opinion. And my difference is, is I don't feel like I have the right, Woody, I'm yeah. speaking for myself, to make an opinion on what is a cave or a cavern. What I would, de- because if you go back to those words, those words said clear line of sight, clear line of sight to the exit yeah and this is where so, this is where vortex i feel like they they made a mistake um because at vortex 
the sign is right on the entrance of the cave. But there's totally no enforcement. Like I've seen brand new students going past that because they have a gate, a vortex, blocking the cave. But the gate is like 300 feet from the entrance to the actual cave where they have the Green Reaper sign. So people go back there. They swim all the way there just because it's not super deep. And they are like, oh, that was just a cavern. And you, they're turning. Like you immediately turn right and you have no view of the of the outside whatsoever. I think Vortex, as soon as you turn in there, is a cave. Okay. Um, let's, anyway. see what, let's, let's, let's play it. Now so. we've actually transitioned over into the cave part of this dive. And once again, by definition alone, a cave is an overhead environment. May or may not be deeper than 70 feet. In this particular situation, it is deeper than 70 feet. And there is zero ambient light. Now, a lot of people will tell you that Blue Grotta is nothing more than a cavern because you swim down, you follow the rope, you swim up, and there's always going to be ambient light. No that rope. is not actually the case. Here at the very, very bottom, you'll see where all the dark sealed is. Basically, this is the point of where it becomes a cave at Blue Grotto because there is zero ambient light. Yeah, yes, there is a large true. diameter rope that we use as a guideline to come back up. Not anymore. But by definition alone, this is a cave. And you yeah. can see how we transitioned from that cavern to the cave because if I turn off my flashlight, there's zero ambient light. By definition alone, that... I think if you have good visibility and you were on that rope, which they don't have anymore... I think you could probably see some light. You can see the entrance or the exit, though. That's for sure. You can see some light. If you look up, you can see some light from the rope, not from oh, the from bottom the... bottom. Okay. Right? Imagine there was still a rope there. I think if you're at the rope, you can see some light, but for sure you can't see the exit because it's a wall in front of you. There's you, no way. And from the bottom, if, if you're wedged in even more underneath the All the, the way to the you bottom. You cannot see light. Probably not. Um, even I even went clear. Even when good vis is there. Yeah, yeah. Even on good visibility. So let's talk about, and you mentioned already some of the changes at Blue Grotto, which was, I don't know what happened. Something happened. Maybe they came, you know, had a come to Jesus moment. I don't know what happened, but they removed the rope that Brian is talking about. And they placed the sign at 65 feet. I disagree. I don't think the cave starts 65 feet at Blue Grotto. Although, if you say that you have to have a clear, ex a clear line of sight to the exit, then perhaps... You can say that anywhere beyond 65, you can't see the exit. Well, well, would you say that? I mean, no, you were well, there. No, I what, I, what I would say is they put the sign right there at that 65 foot spot, not totally focused on whether or not you could see light beyond that or not. What they did is they said, look, at this spot, this is like the last flat level of rock before it goes. Right after that rock, there's no more level of flat rock until you hit the bottom. Yeah. So you may still be able to see a little bit, but you're going straight down a vertical wall until you hit the very bottom. And then, you know, there's some more rocks on the very bottom. So that was a natural ledge. And I guess they're like, well, where are we going to stick the sign? Right. Either dangle it in water column or stick it out from a wall. So they didn't really have anywhere else to go with it. I see. But not much more below that sign anyway that's when you really do start to lose the light quickly. So it's just a logical placement point. Makes it a cave. Now, the, the good news is here, if you do happen to go that deep in Blue Grotta, you're not going to be there for a very long time uh, because you've only got to swim about 30 feet one way or the other, right. and you're going to have that ambient light poking around the limestone, and you'll be able to see the, the exit point. Whether or not you feel that's safe or not, this is one of the sites that the industry has kind of said, okay, we're not going to really consider this a cave, even though it is by definition alone. And it's a lot of open water and say deep students will go here okay, saying this or change uh, mind. just because it is such an yeah. open area. But now we've actually transitioned back into the cavern. As you can see, as I pan the camera up, you'll see plenty of ambient light there. You can see the overhead environment. You can also see that large diameter rope leading us back out. But we have transitioned. This is another great site to go, say, from open water to cavern all the way to cave as well. But it's an absolutely gorgeous site to go to. It, it kind of gives you a clear distinction between open water, cavern, and cave. And, and it's one of my favorite spots. I take a lot of deep diver students here just because I can get them to 60, 80, and 100 feet. Um, it's a great place for your cavern training and even intro to cave at that now, the last place that we're going to look at is Jenny Springs, and this is down in High Springs, Florida. Well, it's probably the most popular site in the northern system. Florida area just for ca caves and even caverns. Mm -hmm. uh, I love taking open water students here. I love taking specialty students here just because there's so much that we can do. We can drift down the Santa Fe. We can do cavern training. We can do search and recovery. I we can do uh, navigation. Ew. 
Did he say drift down the Santa Fe? No way. <laughs> I thought you were crazy. We never that's did that. That's just gross. We're going to do that. No, dude, that's I'd uh, rather go in the Chattahoochee. Cool. We're, wow. Which Thank is, you. Great which idea. is, fun fact, less clean than the water in Chernobyl. For those of you who don't know the Chattahoochee River here in Atlanta. It's just sure, a no, beautiful site to go to. <laughs> Here we're clearly in open water. We've got a, a direct ascent to the surface without any type of overhead environment. As we start to enter the mouth of the ballroom of what's called Jenny Springs, we will clearly be inside of a cavern. It's an overhead environment. We've got plenty of ambient light coming from the surface. And we still have that entry and exit, even though it's only one part. So once again, we don't have a clear entry and a clear exit. We just have one spot where we're going to enter and exit out of. But now we're in a cavern. We're in an overhead environment. Obviously, we do got to have some lights down there. But we still have plenty of overhead or ambient light, if you will, poking through for us to see. Now, there are certain parts of the ballroom that are considered a cave. Once again, this is one of those sites that the industry has kind of said, well, it's so open and there's not really a spot where somebody can get stuck at. And I actually beg to differ there. There's actually that plenty of places here there at the, say, the ballroom of Jenny Springs where you can actually get stuck. And those spots are where we're actually going to be transitioning over into that cave environment. Now, at the very bottom of the ballroom, there's a grate that actually blocks off the actual entrance to the cave system. Not the entrance to the cave, but the entrance to the cave system, and you can't get beyond that. That's what the industry has actually considered a cave, but by definition, once you've reached that point, you are actually in a cave because there is zero ambient light. If you're holding on to the grate, which a lot of us will swim down, we'll grab onto the gate and let that flow of the water push us. But if you're holding on to that grate, there is zero ambient light. The limestone has actually blocked all ambient light from the surface. And by definition alone, there at the grate, you are technically in a cave. There's also another spot here that I want to briefly talk about. If you're going down into the ballroom, over to the far left-hand yes. wall, there's a little swim through Love that you it. go through. And yes. it's actually wide. You can get through it with a set of doubles. You can get through it with a, a single on your back or whatnot. But once you go through that swim through, that is also a cave as well. And it goes back into a lot, what I call a little turnaround or a little cul-de-sac. But it's a very narrow restriction up in there. And even myself, it's hard for me to get turned around once I'm in there. And once you go beyond that little swim through, then technically you are in a cave. As you can see here, there's zero ambient light. If it wasn't for our flashlights, uh, we wouldn't be able to see anything. But this is a clear definition of what a cave is. It's an overhead environment. Uh, doesn't matter on depth, and there is zero ambient light for us. So we're clearly in a cave here. Uh, but to get back to what I was saying, if you go over to that left side, there's zero ambient light. Uh, there's only one entry and one exit. Now, once you're up in there, there is kind of a ledge that you can swim up over in a ledge. And I've done it a few times in side mount because that's really the only way I can fit through is when I'm in side mount. Because if I've got back mounted doubles or even a single on my back, I can't get through that that little ledge area. So a side mount Some diver is going to be the only one that's actually going to be able to go through there. With that being said, there is still zero ambient light. So your only exit point is to come back through the swim through that you went through initially. So once again, you're in a cave at that point. My suggestion to you, if you are not cave certified, do not go in a cave. If you are not cavern yes. certified, do not go in a cavern unless you are with an instructor who is cavern or cave certified and knows what he's doing. Maybe you're doing it for training. Here's the grate that we're talking about. Like I said, if I was to cut off my light here at the grate, you wouldn't see anything. It would be complete uh, pitch blackness out there. Uh, there's no ambient light hitting this grate whatsoever. You have to get let go. about 25 feet away from the grate and pop up about four or five feet up off the bottom just to catch the ambient light from the mouth. So once again, if you're not cave certified, please stay out of caves. If you're not cavern certified, go get trained to go in that cavern or at least be with a cavern or cave instructor that can lead you through it. Now, certain swim throughs are going to be okay. Even this, the ballroom, the main part of the ballroom at Jenny is going to be perfectly okay for you to swim in, swim out. Just understand when you transition from open water with the swim through to cavern, 
back into a cave. Now, as you can clearly see, we're back in the cavern portion of the ballroom. There's plenty of ambient light for us to see here. Um, and like I said, this is another gorgeous spot. I love taking all types of divers here, open water divers, uh, cavern divers, drift divers, rescue divers, my professional divers. I love this spot as well. It's just so unique. It's a cool little There's dive. so much to do and so much to see. But guys, I hope this kind of gives you a better understanding of the difference of open water with a swim through, what an actual cavern is, and what an actual cave is, and the distinction between them, there is a fine line, and you can cross that line without actually knowing it. But hopefully this video will help you out in understanding when you actually went inside a cavern, when you went inside a cave, and whether or not you should have done it, please make sure that you are trained properly to do it and that you hold the right certifications to do that type of diving. Guys, I really hope you enjoyed this video. Hope you I did. All right, so that is, that's the end of that. But okay, so here, here's my thing. I think that the message from this video is something we both agree with. If you're not cave certified and have the right cave equipment, do not go inside a cave. Clearly. We agree on that. The problem I have and why this video kind of popped up, not only because several people asked me to ask us to comment on and whether we agree or disagree, um, is because Brian is not a cave diver. He's not a certified cave diver. I asked directly, like I reach out, I have his number, we're in contact. He's not a certified cave diver. So if your message is to say no one who is not cave certified should go into a cave, how can you then have videos of you going into caves? How can you then say, this area right here that you see, if I turn my light off, is a cave. And when I go here on the left, by the way, which I've done a bunch of times, in side mount and back mount and all of this stuff, that's a cave. By the way, if you're not cave certified, don't go in caves. Well, first of all, I don't have a problem. I actually liked what Brian said. I thought he did a really good job he of did. describing what is a not pure, objective, clear, black and white conversation. Sure. He really did. He's trying to put some boundaries on it. He did not violate the industry rules. He went into what is currently classified as a cavern. He added on top of that and said, however, in my opinion, because this particular section has no light, technically that's probably a cave. But that doesn't mean that I violated the rules because I assume he's cavern certified or was with it. He's cavern. a cavern instructor, yeah. He's a cavern instructor, so he was fine. Sure. He said, I'm, I am within what the industry has said is a cavern, but I'm telling you in these sections it's a cave. And he kind of then explained. They've allowed that because it's such a big open area that even though there's no light for a moment it's so open that you can easily get back into the light zone so we differ a little bit you gotta no, no, give I him agree a, with you, you gotta I, give him I a actually little disagree with the industry i they, think those are caverns you gotta give him a little wiggle room as to what he is saying there yeah. he, he's not saying but it's okay for me to go into a cave he said I at the it. end don't go in there he was just being he's being rational and reasonable no no i get it and i look yeah, I, I, he I has like some it. videos he has some videos out there where he's doing like line work and stuff and peers and whatnot he knows what he's doing i would love for him to get certified and go diving with us in caves definitely um absolutely so this is not an attack on him whatsoever i i this you know a, he did a great job i'm just saying you know it there's two sides to it you know if you believe like you said that technically that is supposed to be a cave even though the industry is not saying it then if you're not cave certified and you believe in it then you shouldn't go like blue grotto right. is a good example they have that they have that sign at 65 feet if you're not certified, you shouldn't go there, whether you're with students or without students or whatever, if you're not cave certified Look, and have the right equipment. All industries say, make sure you only take students to what is appropriate for their level of training as an overriding guideline above any of this. Correct. Automatically, that puts your the judgment and even potentially the liability on the instructor over and above all the other industries' rules. So. Should you take a brand new open water diver into a cavern that potentially certain sections can lose all light? Probably not. Because of that rule, I don't need these slides or presentation to know that. Right, right, right. You already knew that. I thought he did an excellent job with this, trying to define some rules. It's hard. And help guide some instructors, frankly, on maybe you ought to not be doing this unless you're 
students and you yourself are properly trained. I thought he did a very nice job. He yeah. wasn't he wasn't aggressive at all, by the way. He's really yeah. his demeanor was very like uh not so matter of fact, but just let me throw some rules out there of what this is what I think. now. Yeah. And here's some video to show you what this looks like. He was pretty yeah. cool. Yeah. I, you know, like I said, I think he was in caverns the whole time. I don't think he went into a cave zone. I get it that technically those are cave areas or whatever. I feel for me, they're if they were dry, I would call them all caverns. That's the way I think about it. But obviously you can't look at the dry definition because then they go into like, if there is stalactites, then they are not a cave. Like they'll just go into all of these complexities that we don't have to deal with. Um, but uh, anyway, all of those... Devil's Den, Blue Grotto, and the Ballroom of Ginny, to me, they're caverns. I don't care what the industry said. Fight me. They're not going to fight you, but <laughs> I strongly recommend you do not take anybody now oh, beyond sure. the Blue Grotto sign that they've now put at 65 feet. Or guess what, Gus? We won't have to fight you. We just won't see you at Blue Grotto anymore. Blue Grotto you're going to be banned from that place. <laughs> All right. Well, I hope everyone enjoyed this video. Don't forget to subscribe and like this video. Somebody said, by the way, that uh, I don't know if it was an Android or an iPhone. The app changes. So now when you try to click on the channel, some people are unsubscribing by mistake. So they were like, oh, I unsubscribed from Dive Talk like three times so far. I made a mistake. I clicked on the wrong thing. So everyone, check your status. I don't know why my mind always jumps around don't, because don't. I'm thinking about the word. This whole video was about penetration. And I, oh I can't. My God. What is the... It's what's the this symbol again? Video. <laughs> Remember the symbol for it? If you're underwater, Let's not. if you're underwater Please and I not. say I want to penetrate, I will. If I do that, no, to you, no, no. Would I, you know what no. I want to do? No, no. And I you don't want to know, know exactly what I, Gus lets me and you people are going to. I'm saying let's, let's in this <laughs> section of the cavern, let's go further. And Dude. I don't know what, how else would I tell you underwater? All right. You're thinking, I don't know what you're thinking. I'm glad we don't have sponsors because we would have lost you, all of me them. together. Let's, and then <laughs> you'll be like, okay. I know you'd be like, okay. And you would, I'm just we, saying. We should do an episode about caves, cave signs, by the way. And and I do have, we Great. do have an idea Great. about this because people are like, how can you guys communicate on the water? There's no way you can deliver like a good message without being able to talk. So just watch out oh, for a video I coming up. I can because, deliver really clear message. Oh, without, and I will... Well, it's going to be I'm gonna a test you about complete mine. disaster, but we'll, we'll record it. <laughs> we'll release it anyway. That one's clear that I just gave you. <laughs> anyway, thank you everyone for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and we'll see you on the next one. Thanks, everybody.